Cody Peshk here with Rap4. You're watching CSPN, or the Combat Sports Programming Network. Behind the cameras, my buddy Jason Fertig. We're gonna banter back and forth as we go over paintball news worldwide. So, uh, Jason, actually, one of the players at Operation N War 5 this weekend told me that we didn't banter enough. We don't banter enough? I feel really? Like, I thought I mean, we bantered just fine. Apparently not. I guess, um, I guess this, does this count as bantering now? I don't, I don't think we're talking. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was banter. What's the difference between this and banter? I'm not sure. Maybe we should look it up one of these days. Okay. Is banter more short jokes and stuff? I, it probably is. Okay. All right. Well, we could maybe throw some of those in there. All right. But I'm sensitive, so not too many, okay? <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> the opening clip was from Operation N War 5 this past weekend in Copperopolis, California, and it was by far the best N War I've ever been to. What about you, Ferti? Well, considering I've been to a couple more than you, uh, definitely one of the best ones we've ever hosted. Um, definitely one of the best ones I've ever played at. I uh, got some great time out in the field shooting, took care of a lot of guys, got everything, you know, their gear squared away, helped them get out there and get shooting and uh, just, you know, really enjoyed it overall. It was a lot of fun. I got a chance to get out on the field on day two. Um, I actually flew out Staff Sergeant Andrew Forsyth, who is a um, infantryman in the United States Army. He, I served with him. Uh, I did one enlistment term in the United States Army. He stayed in. Uh, he's my battle buddy. We flew him out from Florida to come see what combat sports are all about. He had an awesome time. He's going to be uh, basically the center. Uh, the main character in the video that we put out uh, for N War, just his experiences coming off the battlefield and onto the modern the MCS field. So we also did a survey while we were out there about how players heard about the game and what brought them out to the game. And the results were pretty interesting. So basically what we're doing here on YouTube and what we do on Facebook is the number one way that people find out about it as far as what we do. And by far, I think the biggest way was word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So players like you guys are the ones that make battlefields like um, the snake pit full of bodies. Um, love to see people come from all around. We have people from Seattle, Wisconsin, Florida, we had a Canadian Australian there, and yes, that is a legitimate combination. All right, Dundee, right? Yes, so I've... awesome guy. Uh, ended up one for one with a pistol with him. All right, that was fun when we uh, charged up the slag rock wall. Cool. That was an interesting little firefight. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he was the one rocking. He had the Aussie cam. It was easy. Yeah. To, easy to point out. I mean, not easy to see, but it, it was easy to tell him apart from the rest of his team when yeah. they, when they're standing there and you got the guys in the multi cam, the ACU, and. You know the at pat and whatnot, and then he's there in the Aussie camo. He's the only one, most probably the most unique camouflage out there, I think. The awards we had this year were pretty cool. They're personalized, so we had since we Bob Long and Greg Hastings were the two generals. We had them sign each award for the players. Here is George Perea's uh, award for that guy, Vincent, the camera guy that, that films all of the Magfed only games down at SC Village once a month. Uh, he came up to End War, and he has some new equipment with him. We can't wait to see what his his footage is about. So his channel is youtubecom slash Paladid. So he has the raw like cameraman's cut that he does. Um, it captures all of the action. He doesn't cut any of it out. You know, some of the videos that I do with the Magfed only games videos are only like a minute long or something, and his are like you know like an hour long. You can see exactly what the game's all about, as well as like you know interviews here and there, um, the the openings and stuff like that. So go ahead and check out his videos if you are into the MCS movement. And what else do we got? Okay, so wanting to settle something once and for all, we're getting a lot of messages on Facebook talking about how big the Helix mags look uh, compared to other magazines. So we got pretty much every magazine out there, right here, to compare against. Oh. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do is I'll go from uh, top we're gonna... to bottom and tell you which ones we got. So we got the 18 round T68 mag, the round collar. We have the 18 round Scarab Arms mag. We have the Mil Sig Square Head mag, which I believe is a 16 round magazine. Uh, we have the Helix mag, which is currently holding 20 to 22 first strike rounds. We're shooting great out there, by the way. Yes, a few of us were running this. That is the T15 magazine from Tiberius. We have our 20 round D mag, and we have a P mag. That one's not gonna sit down. This one has a ranger plate on it, I can't. Anyway, Le P mag. Cool, so here's a photo of all of them lined up, so you can see that, I think the Helix mag is the biggest one, but we're what, like two centimeters for it, it, it? It's barely bigger. Um, it, it's not a big difference, 
And in all reality, when it's in your pouches and whatnot, you don't even notice it. It actually comes out of the pouches really nice. Um, I was running that and the standard D-Mags with the DMR this weekend at uh, in war and you, you barely notice the difference. There's other, a couple other really cool things. Uh, Patrick, if you want to grab the bolt action behind you. Um, so this is so this is the bolt action I've been shooting. As you can see, it's still got its battle scars from this weekend. The dirt, the paint, it's all still on it. You can thank uh, Mason from uh, ODSC for that nice white fill right there when he shot me in the handguard from I don't even know where the hell he was hiding. <laughs> he was hiding in the smelter in some concrete rubble thing. I don't know what yeah. you want to call that, but he was he was dug in there pretty well. He's a tunnel rat, so yeah. Yeah, but um, go ahead and throw the, the 20 round uh, helix mag in there if you would. And you guys see that insertion, the nice click sound? Did you see the insertion? <laughs> and here we go again. Sorry. <laughs> uh... if, if you look, Matt, when he puts the mag in, it's, it's very smooth, very oh. crisp. I love that. I love I love and that if sound. he doesn't break his desk in the process. Uh, you know, listen, listen, listen. Oh, that's nice. Mm. I love that. So those of you who are rocking D mags, you know that you have to give it a good tap, and uh, um, you don't necessarily hear po you know, the click to give you, you know, positive, um, positive feedback, a uh, confirmation that it's seated. But on these babies, just. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm not putting that in later. All you guys are like, oh, Patrick got his video. No, seriously, you'll see when these things come out. So, Helix Mags worked great out there. I rocked them the whole time. I was switching between paint and first strikes the whole time. Um, and Omar had some shape projectiles out there and he was testing them. He said that they were shooting pretty good. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to see it because, you know, I was too busy trying to hunt you down and shoot you because I didn't realize you were filming at that point. But um, it was a lot of fun out there. I was rocking one of the Helix Mags. Um, out there with my uh, my loadout, and uh, it fed really nice, really smooth. I was happy with it, and I can't wait to actually change my loadout all the way over to just the Helix Max. Well, in the uh, in the photo you have here, Patrick, we can see you got a a, a Hawkeye, a new Hawkeye uh, mask set up. Oh yeah, okay. So a long, long time ago, in a galaxy, galaxy far, far, far away. away. <laughs> I, uh, I, a long time ago, I took a, a pair of Hawkeyes, a can of spray paint, a razor blade, and a Mitch Fast hel helmet, or the, what was it, Emerson, right? The Emerson company? Helmet, yeah. yeah. The Emerson helmet. And I combined them all into a goggle mask combo that I, I think still, on a weekly basis, I have a couple of people ask me what goggles are those, because it looks so much different. Um, and I think I might have revamped the Hawkeyes once again. So here's what I was wearing out there. You guys are gonna see in the video, probably seen in a couple of pictures. This is a pair of Hawkeyes with tinted uh, dual thermal lenses. This is a, um, a visor from a what, what kind of? Uh, I think it's a V-Force. V-Force? I don't really know. I, I found the um, was visor. around somewhere in the building and he made it work for Ooh. something else. So we have a warehouse full of paintball um, gear, so I didn't even, uh, I just kind of grabbed it and was walking past. I connected, so I did the normal cut on the mask like I did on the Emerson uh, helmet combo where I cut off the excess under the chin, I cut off the excess over the forehead, and on this one I got really aggressive with cutting it right up almost to the lens. Um, I then refished the headband through the sides of the lens, and this is probably one part that uh, if I was going to do it more pro, I'll probably change this bit a little bit how that how it mounts to the lens because you actually have to pop the lens out a little bit on the sides and I'm not sure like if that's 100% safe so if we were to sell this or something we would definitely update that and um, yeah so basically so as you see the mask just sits on the front of your face and your ears are exposed because I was wearing these which are a Howard Light um, Impact Sports Ear Pro and what they do um, I wear these for shooting so my entire kit that I was wearing out there on the field at NWAR 5 is what I wear when I shoot. That's my, it's, I had real sappy plates, that's that's my uh, real gear, those mag holders on the front are um, for P mags, but you can use them for helix mags. So I, I basically took my entire kit from what I what I use on the range and brought it out to NWAR to play in and just, just you know, updated it for, um, for the 468. And this is a way that I, I was able to even wear the ear pro that I wear when I shoot. So typically when I shoot, I wear sunglasses and this black baseball cap. So this is kind of my way of simulating that. So it worked out great. Um, those of you who wear the pro flexes because you can shoulder or you can cheek, have a good cheek weld with your gun, this is, this is very nice. Once you cut off all the excess and there's no like support material, it's not very rigid, it's nice and 
nice and bendable. It was really nice to get a good cheek weld there. So these headphones are actually sound amplifying. So what they do is they uh, um, they take any sound that's under a certain decibel level and they amplify it in the speakers on the inside. So there's microphones on the outside, speakers on the inside. Um, any sound that's over a certain decibel level, like a gunshot or a bomb or whatever, it will not transfer to the speakers inside. So basically you have amplified hearing for anything that's safe to hear and anything that's too loud that will hurt your ears, it doesn't play, which is really cool. And it has a vol different volume setting on the side. Also there's an audio in, which I intended to hook up to my comms, but I uh, mean, end war, I was gonna try to fit that in end war week and it was just so busy, I just never got to it. But anyway, this is gonna be the setup that I rock from here on out. So you guys are gonna see this a lot and I'll probably do a video on how to do it yourself. So we can make a second one. And these, these headphones, I'm gonna see if we can't carry them in the catalog if, if this ends up getting popular. But they're pretty, they're pretty cheap. I think they retail 50 something bucks. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They got really, the, the amplifying factor is just awesome. Cause I remember we were messing around with them at your house and we could hear your dog upstairs. You can hear people's like rustling around just the clothes that are like, you know, like they're digging around their pocket. You could hear it from across the room. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. So I was, I had these on the whole time. It was great. Also, I didn't, like I said, I did not have the columns hooked up, but my radio was right here and I had it just, just so low. Like, like the volume was crazy quiet so that nobody else, you couldn't even hear me from, you know, here to the camera, but I could hear it um, because it was amplified. So that was really cool. So I had a great time. I also took all of the accessories off of my AR-15 and put them on the 468 because we are training as we fight, my friends. So yeah, I had an awesome time. Came out with some custom gear. You guys will see my kid. I'll probably go over it at some point too. And a lot of custom stuff out there actually. There's a group, what's that group of snipers for too? Lou Arthur is part of a group of snipers that are so obsessed with accuracy that they take their first strike rounds and like vibrate them so that the fill inside of them is even so that when the round is going through the air, they're like intense. Unbelievable. Um, they were making some great shots. And a shout out to Tunnel Rat, also known as Mason Silva, for the 153 yard shot across the, the gully at the snake pit. Um, and that was against, not, was it Lou Arthur that he shot? Uh, yeah, it was a counter sniper, I believe, against Lou Arthur. Yeah, Lou was sniping from across the way, and um, Silva got him with iron sights on his custom Hammer 7 that he made look like an M1 carbine. Yeah, beautiful marker. Talk about custom work, man. That whole place was nothing but custom guns and gear. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody tweaks their own stuff. Um, I, I used to say all the time, um, this is back to the old school days where people modded their gear and made it fit for themselves. Um, mm. it, it, you know, MagFit is not just mainstream. Everybody has their own little tweaks, their own little setups. You know, they, they make it work for how they like it. I mean, I run a bolt action with no sights on it. And you know, you constantly ridicule me for not even putting up my front and rear sights. There's all these pictures of this, him playing with this marker with the sights down, and I'm just like, why, why even have it on it then? And he's like, well, it's there for looks. I'm like, you look stupid. And well, he's like, fine, I'll just take them off next time. I'm just gonna <laughs> glue these up. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't put it past you. I wouldn't be surprised if I broke them and they were stuck down, though, either, because I hardly ever use them. But actually, I think that's still got some air left in it from this weekend, too. Um, luckily, it's not loaded. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got 1,000. Yeah. Cool. I was shooting that. That was, that was safe. Thing on two fills. Way to go so. first thing. Safety first, man. <laughs> um, well, at least got the barrel side on. We're good. Yep. Uh, one of the ones I picked up down at D Day this year, actually. Everything's coated in dirt right now, by the way. We got filthy. Here's a here's a picture of me. I was I don't know what was on my face. I I, don't, I somehow I I think I fell or it was low crawling or something, and I was sweaty. Oh man, dude, I got completely filthy out there. It was fun. It was, I felt like Tom Sawyer or something. It, it was an absolute blast out there. I mean, oh, yeah. great, great group of guys were out there camping. You know, we had a good time. This year was a little bit uh, quieter than past years. Um, in large part, we couldn't really have a fire out there this year because of the the risk of the fire danger is just so freaking high. One little ember would send up the entire place. And uh, last thing we need is a bill from Cal Fire on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, absolutely beautiful out there. Great, uh, just a, a great event. I had an absolute blast year. I, I can't wait till next year. We already started talking, I think the day after the event, there was a, a Facebook group or something to talk about the next one. Um, big, big shout out to Bobby from Magnet Scenarios. He ran the gameplay. Everyone had a great time. Uh, the gameplay was, was super clear this time. And day two, it actually got really interesting when we compressed 
the field, so we put the two CPs like really close to each other. So both teams, it, you were you step out of your out of your CP, out of your spawn point, and, you were in and you're in point. it. Like that's you're you're getting shot at from the second you get out, but not like like an annoying way, like from across the way to the snipers. It was really cool. One of the the, the weirdest things was is there was a lot of long range shooting going on at that point because we were literally shooting from ridge line to ridge line across it. Yeah, you could hear the whistle of the first strike before the round made it to you. Yeah, it was quite creepy hearing that because you hear the whistle and normally that's the signifier of it's going past you. Right. You know, but you're hearing the whistle like it's going past you, and you hear see it hit you know the hill three feet in front of you. Yeah. It, it, it was a it was a, a completely new experience for me on that one. I just man, I, we, we're still talking about it. We're so I can't wait till next year. <laughs> um, we are talking right now about uh, changing the date up a little bit. Typically, N War is the first weekend in October. It was pretty hot though, and uh, that's kind of something. I mean. It's, it's just how it is. You know, anybody who's been to D-Day knows that it's just hot. That's just how it is. Decay of nations. nations. Yeah. They're just, they're, it's just the weather's just hot during during those months. So we're thinking about pushing it back, but we don't want to mess with Halloween. We don't want to mess with the holidays. So we're talking about it right now. Um, but we might end up picking a cooler month next year. But other than that, I mean, I'm I think thinking, that was the only thing we could have done better. I'm thinking the 1st of January, Patrick. 1st of January? Let's do it. Oh, man. <laughs> I would, too. I would. That would be kind of cool, though. A New Year's game? New Year's bash? You know what would be interesting is a game with shape projectiles, like, only. Like, once these the shape projectiles hit the market, which is not going to be long. Um, because they're they're weatherproof, so you could have a really good rain game and never have to worry about soggy paint. Yeah, you just have to worry about soggy goggles. Soggy goggles? Yeah, when you start fogging up because of the humidity. Oh right, well you just get that spray that we in the catalog, and that helps go. that. Yeah. There you go. But anyway, awesome game. Yeah, we could go on and on about it, but we'll just wait until the video comes out, and maybe next episode we'll reveal we'll, it. We'll probably be talking about this for like the next three, four, five, ten, twenty episodes, knowing me and Patrick. Not to mention on all kinds of company time. Oh, by the way, we're also gonna you know start dragging Patrick out to more paintball events. I'm slowly, slowly but surely making him a paintballer. Apparently, I got drafted into going to this Cthulhu game. What's this Cthulhu game about for two? All right, so the Call of Cthulhu game is a lockdown scenario game. Um, you guys have heard us talk about them in the past. This is going to be a, a really fun one. I'm actually going to be one of the generals, so if you want to go out there and play with me, join the blue team, want to go play against me, you'll be allied with Mark Gonzalez, who's general in the red team. Mark um, Gonzalez. Mark is, was a was the red EXO at this event, at, our, at Operation End War, and the year before he generaled it. Um, he's actually a, he's a veteran of the lockdowns, too. He generaled, uh, I believe, the last event as well. And uh, it's going to be a good fight, because Mark and I are actually on the same team. So this is going to be at Shooters All Season Paintball in Nicholas, California. This is just a little bit north of Sacramento. It's like 30, 40 minutes or something like that. It's going to be on Veterans Day weekend, which is November 8th and 9th. I mean, I got that's on Veterans Day. The weekend. It's not on the Monday. Okay. So you still get your Monday. All right. I'm going to take that Monday off. There you go. It's better. Like the last four years, everybody's like, oh, Patrick, take Veterans Day off. And then it ends up, we need to do something. Oh, CSPN's on Fridays now. So that was the deal. It was Monday night paper. I was like, well, I have to do Monday night. Cool. That's the reason why. Yeah. So awesome. there you go. <laughs> I'm going to take that money out. So <laughs> Veterans Day weekend, November 8th and 9th. It's $55 um, for online registration, $60 if you walk on. That includes play for both days plus a night game, a patch, a raffle entry, and it is event paint only, which is going to be $45 to $75 per case. It depends on quality and $40 for first strikes. And um, if you want unlimited uh, high pressure air, it's only $5. So, very cool. Um, so, for, I mean, first thing, you're definitely going. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be out there without a doubt, considering, you know, I'm one of the main headliners now for the event as a general. Yes, yes, <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, first thing's a general, he's gonna be there. I am getting peer pressured, I will probably be there. Um, and I think I might trade my registration for taking pictures and stuff for them, because that's a lot of fun. And Nicholas is a cool field. It's like in a, it's like a vineyard or a farm or something. Um, it, it's, it's in farm country, um, specifically the, um, they have orchards out that way. It's not actually in an orchard, but it's um, in the land around the orchard. So you get a lot of trees growing in there. It's a lot of, you know, down and dirty woods ball. Um, they have some really interesting areas that are pretty open and stuff like that. The final battles are always an absolute blast. Um, just, it, it, it's always fun. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so don't miss it if you're in Northern California, we will be there. And next up for you guys, we have the blowout sale. Pretty cool. Anyway, 
Blue Out Sale is the biggest sale we've ever had. It's the greatest cl closeout sale in Rap 4 history. Nearly 80% of the catalog is discounted right now, ridiculously low, and it's not gonna last. So if you've been thinking about buying some um, soft goods as far as gear goes, if you were thinking about buying some accessories for your rifle, your marker, or anything like that, I mean, it, it, I couldn't even go down the list of everything that's on sale right now. So go to rap4.com and check it out. It's a huge sale. We're, we're looking to make some room because honestly this year we got so much interest from military and law enforcement units at Urban Shield that we realized that we need to focus on the 468. We need to focus on the new band kits. We need to focus on the shape projectiles, the helix mags, all of the stuff that we've been talking about. Our warehouse needs to be full of pretty much just that because that's what's important. So we are making room for all of that new product to come in. We can't place the order until we get the room. So help us out, help yourself out, check out the discounts, they're unbelievable. One, of the, one other event that uh, we were recently at was down at Decay of Nations. That's at SC Village, the home of the MFOG games. Now I've been out there, uh, this is my fourth year actually, and this is one of the most, uh, most fun years I've had down there. Yeah, um, we, there was a mag fit only portion that uh, myself and my team uh, played in actually. It was a, a lot of fun. It pitted a bunch of mag fit players against pretty much everybody else. So it was about uh, 60 mag fit players. Sights down. See? Can't just let it go, can you? No, I can't. You can, you can never let it go. That's all I think when I look at it. You know what? Fine. I'm putting a scope on it for the next <laughs> event, okay? I'm going to put a scope on it. Well, I, didn't, make whoa, you happy. Whoa, whoa, I didn't say go that far. <laughs> Um, but it was an absolute blast. Um, my team was out there. We were we were uh, just a small contingent of us, but you know, as you guys can see, it was an absolute blast. Um, uh, Stephanie actually is the one who took some of the photos of it that, you, that we've been showing here. Stephanie Boltes, I think that's how you say it. She might, dare I say, be the best paintball photographer I've ever seen. She does all the magfit only games. She came out to Operation Anwar, so she's got some photos from that. And she was at the Cave of Nations. She's all over the California paintball and MCS scene. So thank you, Stephanie, so much for dominating the battlefield with your camera. Awesome. Absolute great shot, absolute great time. Um, for everybody that stopped by to see us, you know, we're happy to see you guys there. For everybody that I helped out with their markers, Glad we could get you guys taken care of. If you guys need anything in an event, just you know, swing by and let me know, and I'm more than happy to get you guys taken care of. Totally cool. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with some footage from Operation and War 5, but before that, I want you to know that CSPN is your show. We make it from the content generated from our Facebook page and our email inbox. So if there's anything you'd like to see in next week's episode, just email us at CSPN at moderncombatsports.com or post it to the wall at facebook.com slash rap4usa. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and we'll see you out there. Your banter, 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 banter.